one of the things I'm seeing is um, there's an increase in anxiety about it, and it's just kind of across the board. It's not like one or two people. It's like lots of people feeling anxious. And um, what I see them doing is they're talking about it. My clients, they talk about it. If I happen to like, you know, stay, stand six feet away from my neighbor and that's the co topic of conversation, <laughs> we're talking about it. So talking about it does help deal with it. And I, I have seen just more anxiety about it. So are people talking more about mental health issues then than before when you previously saw or do you think it's just the feelings of anxiety have increased not just talking about it right right so it's not that they're talking more about mental health issues they're just talking about the fact that they are anxious mm. so that's that's more the thing and yeah. where do you think that anxiety stems from? What is it the uncertainty? Is it uh, people are afraid? Where do you think that comes from? Yeah, and you're right. Uncertainty, there's a whole lot of uncertainty. Yeah. Like, you know, what's going to happen with school? You know, I'm, gra I'm a graduating senior. What's going to happen in the fall? Will I be able to go to college? Will there even be school in the fall? Will I be able to get a job? Those those are pretty normal anxieties for people to have. And when you mention some of those questions, I think about parents talking to their children. Um, you know, kids are out of school. Maybe they didn't get a prom. Now they're worried about if they'll get into a college. And a lot of that communication that parents used to have with children, maybe some of that has gone away. How can parents connect with their children right now? And why is it important for them to do so? Okay, so that's a, such a good question. So. Um, I encourage parents to be observant and they um, might not be paying attention unless it's something extreme or or they might notice you know my gosh my daughter is just shut herself off in her room and she d won't come out she doesn't talk to us and they might not think too much about it but hopefully they're observant about it and they'll go ask about it and find out what's going on and how do you have those conversations without fear of, you know, retaliation or denial? How do you have that conversation with your child if you notice something is off? Yeah, so hopefully they have a, a relationship ahead of time so they can just start to address it and, and bring it up. So I'm noticing that you're in your room a lot. I'm wondering what might be going on, what might be wrong. And hopefully they'll start to talk about it. Yeah. And you know, I think same goes for adults, uh, friends that you used to see when your children played Little League together and you'd have conversations, mm -hmm. that social aspect. How can adults connect with other adults right now? Right, and that's the hard part. They're, they're struggling too. We're all struggling with the separation and Sometimes they need to just pick up the phone and call. Um, you know, I, I had a, a family member said, you know, I'm just noticing grandpa is really irritable. He's grouchy. He's a bear to be around. And so I said, well, maybe you could just ask him. Just ask, you know, are you upset? And they don't live with grandpa, but you could just ask him, are you worried about grandma being sick? And maybe he'll talk to you about it, but just ask him. So just take that first step and see what... Exactly, right. Yep, yep, get started. Mm -hmm. Now, if they are, um, if they do respond, you know what, I am having some issues, then wh what then? What's your advice for people, how to help your friends, how to help your child? Okay, so yeah, so increase the communication. Sometimes they need to talk to a professional and they are welcome to call Associated Counseling. We have people who work, I work with teenagers and families and kids. And um, a lot of times it really helps them to talk to someone besides a parent or even a sibling about their issues. Mm -hmm. So they can feel it's safe, I can talk here and somebody won't retaliate, won't get upset with me for what I'm bringing up. 
Right, that's a good point, yeah. What are some signs that we can look out for when somebody may be needing help? I know you yeah. have mentioned you know, previously maybe they're not acting like themselves, but when is it, oh, you know, it's this is a hard time for everyone, and when is it we really need to get some help? Okay, yeah. Um, so I would look for some of the more extreme kinds of things, like if someone is making threats or saying they do feel hopeless or... I wish I wasn't around anymore. People would be happier if I wasn't around. They might not be that direct though. They might not even be saying that. So hopefully if it's a parent or an older sibling, they can ask and find out mm. if, if they are uh, really, really depressed because I'm talking about extremes. But those kinds of things might not show up as much during this crisis because the focus is all on, well, let's avoid getting the virus. And so there isn't thoughts of um, maybe someone's seriously depressed as well, or they already were and they've become more depressed. And I mean, it's not so much of a stigma to talk about these things. I mean, we should naturally be talking about our mental health, right? That's right, right. Right, that's such a good point because people think, well, we'll just, we just don't think about it. We don't have to think about it and everything will be okay. But that's, that can be very dangerous. And as I mentioned earlier, I think anxiety has increased during this crisis. So it's important to talk about it. It's important to bring these yes, up. Yes, it is important. You, even if you can't do it in person, find other ways. Right, right. And people are finding they can use Zoom online to um, have some contact. That is helpful. And what about, you know, just having that communication with your friends or with your kids? You can't, um, you know, meet up in person. You, you don't have those long drives in the car where you maybe are able to have great conversations. How can we keep up just communication in general, whether it has to deal with the virus or not? Yeah, so people, um, I guess they can send emails to each other. Those can be fairly long, but the voice, voice can be so helpful that they can have the, at least the voice contact. They might not be able to have in-person contact, but at least the voice contact is really good. And for the elderly, I'm sure, especially, whether you know they get that hug from their grandchild, mm -hmm. does a voice you know, fill that void for now? The voice is good, and I, I know that people will drive over or drive by the nursing home or where grandma and grandpa live and just have a drive by and wish grandma happy birthday. Yeah. Yeah, so those kind of things. People are getting really creative. It's really cool to see that. Yes, it is. Any other advice for people that may be struggling with COVID-19, how to maybe get past this? Yeah, um, I think, you know, like if I start to feel anxious about, wow, there's so much going on, what do I do? I try and get some facts. You know, so I like to listen to Mayor Stothard's updates, her daily updates, and Dr. Adi Poor, and uh, she just gives facts. Here's what's going on with the virus today. Here's what's likely to go on with people clustering, and so here's what we all need to keep doing. And so when you have facts, then you can say, here's what my plan is. Here's what I can do about it. So that's a really helpful thing. Being informed. Yeah. Yeah, being informed, yeah, and then you know, okay, I can take this next step, taking some action. So the step might be just as small as, I was able to go to the grocery store today. I wore a mask. I made sure that I stayed six feet away from people. And that's their action. And they can keep doing it and find that over time, it will decrease the anxiety. Very great. Is there anything else that you would like to add? Any other? I have a question for you, and you can just look at Ruta too when you're responding. Okay, um, good. You did touch on this a little bit, but say I'm talking to my best friend on the phone, and she says something like, I just don't think I can do this anymore. What do I say to her? You know, that's for most people, that's kind of an awkward conversation. What should 